Before you can use Git, you're going to need to do a bit of setup. To install it locally on your machine, you can go to git-scm.com and download the installer for your machine. On a Mac, you may also need to have Xcode installed on your machine, which you can get from the Mac App Store. You may need to install Homebrew, which you can get by going to the Homebrew website, then copying this right here, and switching over to a terminal and pasting that command in here. You'll need to have super user access to your computer. This is going to take a while. And after you do that, you'll need to run the brew install git command. And on a Mac, you can use the built-in terminal application. I like using an app called Hyper since it lets you control the size of the font and go full screen for demos. To make sure we have git installed, you can try the git minus minus version command. And that should give you a version like this. Let's take a look at what a Windows installation looks like. We'll click on download for Windows here, and then we'll click on this button to download the installer. We'll go ahead and run the installer and run through the setup application. This should give you the option to install Git Bash, and we'll ask it to launch it when it finishes this installation. Git Bash will allow you to run Linux commands on a Windows machine. Next, the first thing you should do after installing Git is to configure your application with your name and email address. Let's start by adding our name. This command stores your name in a global variable that's available to all future Git installations. So it uses your name to give you credit when you do things. Let's go ahead and store our email address next. If you're going to be using GitHub, it's important that this matches the email address you used when you created your GitHub account. To test it, you can try downloading the source code for this simple project. I'm going to scroll all the way down and click on this source code zip file. This is going to download it onto my machine, and I'm going to double click to decompress it. And I'll rename this folder just demo site to keep things simple. I can delete the zip file now, and I'll go back into my terminal application and navigate to that folder. Let's take a look at what's in it. I can do that with the ls command. This gives you a list of the files in the folder. You should see an index.html file, a script.js file, and a style.css file, plus a folder for images. Let's try our first command. We'll do a git init. This initializes git and creates a new invisible folder called .git. Let's clear this out and do an ls command again. You can see the git folder right here. Notice that if I open up the folder in my operating system, you won't be able to see the git folder because it's invisible. You could run a git status command at any time to see what git is thinking. This is giving you a lot of information, showing you that you don't have any commits, but that git noticed that there are a number of files in there, so it's calling them untracked, and it's even telling you what you need to do to start tracking them. You can always delete the git installation by using the remove command on the git folder. I'll issue an rm minus r and then delete that .git folder. And if I try to do a git status command, it's going to tell me that this is not a git repository. So I would need to initialize it again. And now a git status would give me the same information as before. Removing the git folder is permanent, so be careful when doing that. It may be a good idea if you want a clean history of a project or if you're using a project as a quick template for a new project.